everyone and welcome back to the Rescue Hen series. I've actually really missed doing these hen updates and I hope you've missed them as well. So it feels really good to be back this morning and I've got quite a few little updates for you. First and foremost, the hens are doing great. They're still coming on leaps and bounds. They still seem really happy and content and just in really enjoying their new life, I guess. And the chihuahuas always want to get in on the action. <laughs> Anyway, so a big thing that's happened over the past few weeks is obviously the weather has absolutely nosedived. I think it was getting pretty bad the last time I did an update, but it has got so much colder, especially the last week. It, I think it went down to like minus three here one night, which I don't know if you're watching in the States or anywhere like that, then you're going to think that's nothing. But it felt absolutely freezing and I just can't seem to stop worrying about them. <laughs> no matter what anyone says to me, even when my husband's been out to see them in the night and checked on them and felt how warm they are. I mean, it, it sets my mind to rest then, but then like the next day, if it's really cold, I'll be worrying about it again. So there just seems to be no let up for me in terms of worrying about them being cold. I'm sure once they're completely fully feathered, that worry will go away. But at the moment, it has been really challenging. I mean, they're all still here every morning. I'm like, have you counted four heads? Because I'm just paranoid that one of them is gonna die. We have tried to do what we can to make the coop as draft free as possible. So we've actually put Andy bought a cover for our car and <laughs> that's ended up on the chicken coop. So I just really want to put something over the top of it a few people have actually suggested that to me but I think I just wanted to put something over the top just to make sure that drafts weren't getting into the actual house bit since we've done that that has helped to put my mind at rest a bit we've also added a bit of extra insulation just for these really cold months um, and he had some leftover like silver insulation sheets which he's put across the ceiling and then within our dog food delivery box um, that we get they always wrap it in this like insulated wall stuff it absolutely smells like farmyard which isn't the best considering I don't really buy any animal based products like wool or anything like that but it comes around their frozen food and it is what it is but actually over the past couple of months I've been saving it we get quite a long strip it's about you can't see but it's like bigger than that <laughs> um so I've been saving that over the past couple of months and decided that that would be really good just to put around like the lower level just to make sure that the bit where they're actually sleeping is extra insulated so that's all been going okay I have to say that I feel a little bit let down with the coop. I mean, the coop's amazing. I've been super happy with it. It's been the perfect kind of setup for what we wanted. But we have had some leaking issues, which has been really frustrating because I think there was three different kinds of roof that you could get. There was the cheapest, a mid-range one, and then a really expensive one. So we went mid-range thinking that's going to be absolutely fine we're obviously going to coat it with the weatherproof paint and stuff like that as well so we thought the mid-range one would be the best but on reflection I wish that we'd just paid more for the most expensive one because I believed that the mid-range one was going to be completely watertight and it just hasn't been and that's been quite disappointing I think considering how much we spent on the coop I don't know if it's just the level of rain that we've had has meant that some of the woods got a bit saturated with damp or I don't know if that roof just is isn't weatherproof I'm pretty sure like when we ordered it and stuff we was under the impression that it was going to be water resistant and weatherproof but I think you know it's wood at the end of the day so if it rains continually for a week I guess there's going to be some seepage and damp at some point along the line so that has been quite frustrating because I really don't want them to be damp and cold so we've we've tried to do our best to like cover up any damp spots and whatever else but it's just been like it's been hard it's been challenging actually I think <laughs> let's just say I think when the warmer spring summer months come I think all of this is just gonna feel like a breeze I think we've had the most challenging 
seasons to contend with at the very beginning, which for beginners like us hasn't been ideal, but you know, we're getting through it. The good news is at the moment we're having quite sunny, dry days now. The rain has stopped. It's very frosty in the mornings, predominantly throughout the daylight hours that we do have. Um, it's pretty sunny. So they've really been enjoying just sort of mooching around, going in their dust bath, sunbathing, that sort of thing. So that's been nice to see because it has been so frosty in the morning. Um, I think on a couple of the mornings their water had frozen over and every morning now we're making sure that we give them almost like a hot mash for their breakfast and like their main meal of the day. I'm a little bit frustrated because we started off with the small holders pellets and mash which they seem to quite like and then when it comes to that running out and us ordering a new bag my husband was like oh let's go for something a little bit more cost effective because I think the small holders bag was around 20 pounds and there was other options on there for around 10 pounds so he was like let's go for one of the cheaper options so we went for one of the 10 pound bags and they literally turned their noses up at it i was really surprised i was thinking how much difference can there be in these pellets but they were not impressed and they pretty much have refused to eat the pellets in their hard form <laughs> But as it turns out, as the weather's been cold, we've been making the pellets warm. We've been adding hot water, mashing them up a bit for them anyways. And that they've been totally going for. So I don't really think it's an issue with the flavor of the pellets because when it's all mashed up and warm, they really like it. So maybe it's more a case of, I don't know, the consistency or the size of them, but they seem to be fine with the other layers pellets. So I don't really know what's going on there. But I think when these ones run out, I'm just gonna go back to the previous ones because they actually ate them dry as well. I think maybe they just generally prefer mashed up food. That's what it's seeming like anyway. <laughs> With regards to food, they act like they're hungry all the time. And this is the other thing that almost causes me to have like a constant state of anxiety because I know they're getting enough food. They basically have their hot mash in the morning. Then in sort of after lunchtime, we give them something like sweet corn or they've been having a bit of tuna or sardines. Um, sometimes they have grapes or sultanas. And to be honest, I had no idea that chickens could eat fish. When people on the ex battery forum were saying to me, oh, give them tuna or give them sardines. I was like, really? I don't know why. I know birds can eat fish, but it just didn't occur to me that they could eat fish. But actually it's supposed to be really good for them, especially ex batteries where they're sort of trying to grow their feathers and stuff. I think the protein is really good for them. So they've been having like, you know, a variety of different treats. And then just before they go to bed, they get a couple of cups of corn as well. So. I know that they're not going hungry, but it's how they make you feel. I wasn't really prepared for that. I wasn't really prepared for the intensity of like every time I go outside, they're like squawking at me like they're hungry or any little noise or any little rustle, they, they wanna be there and they wanna know what it is. Maybe that's just how they are. The other annoying incident that we've had over the past few weeks has been the arrival of Mrs. Rat. I'm calling her Mrs and her because she is huge. I mean, I sent the video of the rat to one of my friends and their comment was, it looks like it's on steroids. This rat is massive. Thankfully, I've only seen one and she was bold as brass. She was literally in broad daylight. We were sat at our computers, looked out the window. We saw her walk into the run, nibbling around, doing her thing scooting out the other side, going under the fence, coming back a few minutes later. Like it was quite entertaining to watch her, but then at the same time, we were just like, damn. Uh, loads of people have said to me, when you get chickens, expect rats. We are obviously in the thick of the countryside here. We back onto an open field. We've also got a building site next to us. And I think the work there has maybe disrupted rats. I don't know. I've only seen one, but she looks I mean, she must be pregnant. So we bought a humane trap and our plan was to try and catch her and then drive her far, far away and release her. In our opinion, that was like the most humane way to go about 
removing her but then obviously we're animal lovers we we're probably overly sensitive to these things and then the conversation started well if she is pregnant and she has her babies and then we trap her and take her away her babies are going to starve to death i mean the conversations about rats in this house have been crazy on the one hand i've got people saying to me oh they're vermin you know you can't have them you've got to get rid of them blah 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 which i get i get but then the compassionate side of me is in battle with the other side of me. I know she has to go. We have to try and catch her. The rat trap that we bought from Amazon hasn't worked so far. She has taken it upon herself to dig a hole and I can't believe the amount of soil that had mounded up at the side of our chicken coop and the hole was clear as day going underneath our chicken coop. She's trying to burrow. I don't know if she's trying to get up. She probably is, but then it seems a bit stupid because it's like, well, you can walk into the run and literally walk into the house. Why would you burrow under and then try to come up? Hoping, fingers crossed, the galvanized wire is vermin proof as it should be, but Part of me thinks if she's gnawing away at that for days and days and on end, is she eventually gonna get through it? We've got a problem at the moment and <laughs> we need to get it resolved basically. I haven't actually seen her for quite a while. I haven't seen her since we put the trap down. So maybe they're just highly intelligent. I don't know. I mean, it's just one of those things. It's just, you know, I expected it was probably going to happen. And when you've got corn, you know, people say, oh, we'll take the food up off the floor. But it's really challenging because then I'm just going to have to just purely feed them in their run. Whereas at the moment, they like eating outside when we just throw like the occasional tree in the outside run um, you know obviously that's going on the ground and it's probably not helping so I don't know we're gonna have to think if anyone's got any advice or helpful comments leave them down below for us but at the moment it's not too bad but I'm just worried obviously if she has 10 babies then what is the situation gonna be so I think that's pretty much it to be honest not a great deal has happened over the past four weeks I don't really feel like I'm noticing a huge difference in them in themselves other than you can see the feathers are starting to come through I think Miranda's neck is getting fluffier as time goes on. Obviously, over time, they're just building their confidence and just improving and improving. They're each laying one egg a day. People, our neighbors and family, friends have been loving the eggs, so much so that we can't keep up with the demand, basically. We have tried feeding the eggs back to the hens, but they really don't seem interested. The few times that we have tried it, they've basically left it and they've gone to waste. So we're not really going with that anymore. Um, but everyone that's tried the eggs have said that they're amazing and they're really nice. So as soon as we put a box outside, it goes. On reflection, I feel like maybe I should have got six hens. I mean, none of this has been about the eggs, but it would have just been easier in terms of boxing eggs up if I had six hens and they were each laying an egg a day because then I would get a box a day. Whereas at the moment I'm getting like three or four and then the next day getting three or four. And then, so I'm sort of getting a box every other day at the moment, but the eggs isn't important. Eventually they're probably gonna stop laying and we won't be getting any. So that's not at all the reason why we got the hens, but it's been interesting. It's been interesting seeing them lay and how different the eggs are and we get into the stage now where we know that who's laid what egg and he actually opened the coop the other day to um, do a poop scoop and he caught Miranda in the act of laying guys oh look I missed it just popped out oh my god that is not very nice at all it's really unusual because we've only seen that online before we've not seen them in person laying so he managed to just catch it on his camera looks really painful looks i don't know it looks like giving birth <laughs> it's a bit grim to be honest it was interesting it was interesting that he caught that clip so anyway that is it for the two month update i hope you've enjoyed this little chat and update on how the hens are doing we're obviously now gearing up for christmas so if you've got any ideas of a special treat we could give the hens at christmas let me know down below they seem really indifferent to veg they don't really seem that interested in veg at all. Whenever I've put it in there, they've just kind of left it. But if your hens like anything in particular at Christmas, comment below and let me know. And yeah, we hope you all have a really nice Christmas and a happy new year. And we will be back again in January with the three month update. I'll see you all then. Bye.